Now, I'd like to invite Ms. Adelia Dwidharman Atatmaja, Bachelor of Engineering with Honors, Bachelor of Communications, PhD, to take over and lead the main session. Dr. Adelia, the floor is yours. Okay, uh, thank you, Farah, for the um, introduction. And um, we would like to start the session soon. And the first speaker will be uh, Mr. Tori Damantoro, and followed by Mr. Eduardi Prahara, and then followed by Dr. Andreas Rao. So, um, for the question and answer session, will be done after all the presenters present um, share their knowledge, and then. Anytime you want to ask questions, please just write it in the chat box because sometimes um, after all the information you might forget. So just make sure you put it, your questions in the chat box and it will be answered later on. And I would like to start our first session and I would like to introduce uh, Mr. Tori Damantoro. Mr. Tori graduated his bachelor degree in transport civil engineering from Gajah Mada University in 2000 and hold two master degree in transportation system and in public policy and management. Both were from University of Southern California. His jobs evolved from engineers to NGO to police policy advisor and to academics since February 2022. And as NGO with strong engineering and public policy background, Mr. Tori has been more than 20 years working to promote sustainable transportation from urban air pollution, public transportation, non-motorability equality, social inclusion, climate change, sustainable development goal, till recently on infrastructure finance, energy transition, and green development. His works constantly challenge him to catch up with ever-changing global agenda that affect transportation sector. Particularly in the past five years, Mr. Tory works as technical advisor in major infrastructures project, started from 32 trillion LRT Jabodetabek project and LRT in Medan and airport in Kediri and Nusantara New Capital Airport Railway and many other projects. Therefore, it is timely for Mr. Tory to enhance his knowledge and com competence on the economic and social impacts on infrastructures which will work for the global challenges in transport infrastructure course. This course will add um, to Mr. Tory's continuous commitment on self-improvement since his early career in 2003. Um, for Mr. Tori Damantoro, the floor is yours. Uh, Thank you, Bu Adele, for the impressive introductions. <laughs> I myself was amazed with the introduction. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, so, uh, can you hear Sorry. us? Hello? Mr. Can you Tori. hear us? Yes. Yeah, yeah. We can hear you. Yes. We can yeah, hear you. Okay. Please. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Miss Adelia, for the introductions. And then uh, today I would like to present about the uh, new, uh, new concept in the urban transport planning yeah uh, which is a sustainable urban mobility plan uh, i will share my uh, screen okay can you see it yes we can see it okay thank you miss lenny okay uh, ladies and gentlemen uh, it's very happy uh, it is uh, my pleasure to meet all of you and uh, participate in this uh, very uh, important uh, seminar uh, for civil and environment engineering technology uh, cooperation between Venus and TUM. And uh, uh, hello for all the speakers, uh, Mr. Uh, Eduard Dupahara and also Mr. Andreas. And uh, Thank you, Ms. Adele, that will be moderating this uh, session. Okay, my presentation is uh, from sustainable transport to sustainability, sustainable mobility, a practice in urban transportation planning. Uh, I will uh, bring uh, in this presentation the case from Sarbagita Metro Area uh, in Bali, Indonesia. Okay, 
what are the challenges in transportation uh, urban transportation planning um, the classic challenge is uh, uh, okay uh, in sorry uh, my presentation my presentation will uh, will consist of four uh, topics first is challenge in urban transport planning and then from transport to mobility uh, and expected result in future urban transportation planning and last one uh, a case study from Sarbagita sustainable urban mobility plan first is understanding challenge in urban transport planning uh, Yes, uh, challenge in transport uh, in urban area uh, is always evolving. Evolving, yeah. Uh, from classic uh, challenge in urbanization and motorizations to a challenge because of uh, uh, lack of use or decreased use of uh, public transport, and also a challenge that uh, uh, occur because of uh, merging between transportation and ICT or in information and communication technology. Uh, for rapid urbanization, many studies already done and many uh, uh, projects uh, have been uh, developed to address uh, rapid urbanization and how transport uh, planning can serve uh, and can provide a, a good uh, fabric of movement of people and goods uh, to the urban area. So uh, uh, sprawling uh, happens in most uh, of uh, any cities in ASEAN and also in Indonesia. Uh, and it, it uh, make a longer distance uh, for travel, daily commuting uh, in, in Jabodetabek is approximately 15 kilometers now. Uh, but surprisingly, uh, even though in Makassar, uh, Semarang and Sarbagita, uh, the last three metropolitan area that I studied, uh, the average travel of uh, commuting trips uh, in uh, daily uh, is uh, almost uh, almost reaching uh, ten kilometers. So um, it's it give a, a specific challenge uh, for transport planners. Uh, to address uh, these issues. And then uh, because of uh, rapid urbanizations, uh, more and more people living in uh, cities uh, and especially the metropolitan area, uh, Bapanas predict that uh, by 2050, uh, there will be 60% of Indonesian population living in urban area. And then uh, because of a bigger cities, uh, sorry, because cities become um, bigger and bigger. So uh, many activities happened uh, because uh, uh, many kind of uh, economic activity also uh, develop uh, within the urban area. It uh, create a different kind of movement, uh, not only commuting, but also freight, uh, also short distance, medium distance, chain street, and etc. That should be addressed um, uh, by the transport planners. The other challenge is a rapid motorizations. Yes, uh, in most Indonesian cities, uh, motorcycles uh, is uh, uh, dominating uh, the traffic scenes. Uh, yeah, in, uh, in in Indonesia, seventy until eighty percent of the traffic uh, uh, dominated by uh, the use of motorcycles. Is it frozen or the signal or something? Yeah, I think we're experiencing some technical yeah. issues with uh, Mr. Tori. Uh, okay. For all the participants, I apologize, but I'm trying to reconnect to uh, Mr. Tori as soon as possible.
Okay, Mr. Tori is here. Yeah, sorry, you are I'm sorry, sorry. It's all right. Yes. Mr. Tori, you can continue. Okay. Yes, sorry. Yeah, okay. So, uh, one of the challenges, uh, uh, especially in the past two decades, is uh, the decreased use of public transportations uh, due to the motorizations and especially due to the uh, lack of investment in, in maintaining uh, quality of public transport infrastructure and services. Uh, so, uh, when when the all motorization uh, happened and the definition uh, of motor motorcycle is very prominent, uh, the issue is will be coverage and reliability of public transports has become become a, a challenge uh, for transport uh, transportation plannings. For examples, now in in Jakarta, uh, the BRT system of Transjakarta already covered 88% of uh, uh, administration area in Jakarta province, 88%. Uh, it's operate uh, almost 4,000 uh, vehicles with uh, either a, a small, medium, or big, or, or big articular devices. And, uh, and it's uh, uh, also has, has a, uh, is subsidy from the provincial government up to three trillion uh, rupiah. It's a very big. Uh, it's similar to uh, the total uh, GDP of uh, medium medium cities in Indonesia. Nonetheless, uh, with this kind of uh, under, uh, massive undertaking in public transport uh, service uh, provisions, uh, the use of Transjakarta busway. Uh, bus system in, in Jakarta is only uh, around 400 to 500,000 passengers per day. So uh, this is also a challenge for transportation planners uh, in urban area. The other one is uh, merging between transportation and ICT. Uh, we, uh, since 2015, Indonesian cities uh, experiencing a massive explosion of uh, share uh, or online uh, transportation services, yeah, uh, with the two giant uh, uh, Decacron uh, startup uh, that use applications uh, to serve uh, daily trips uh, and uh, transportation need uh, of uh, urban uh, people. And then uh, this is uh, also uh, should be uh, carefully uh, analyze and in, uh, take uh, into consideration when we planning uh, transport urban transport uh, because uh, it can uh, it can be uh, uh, it can be it can be used uh, in two ways as a substitution uh, substitutions of a public transport or uh, as a as a complement yeah complement of the public transport. Uh, in this, uh, when you're dealing with this, uh, uh, you definitely have to uh, think out of the box uh, uh, beyond the, the classical standard of uh, urban transport planning. So this is uh, from transport and mobility. Um, in the past five years, uh, many uh, literatures and many uh, projects from development agencies uh, shift from transport uh, planning, uh, sustainable transport to sustainable mobility. So uh, this be, uh, this happened because there are uh, change in uh, paradigm, scope, and the focus of urban transport planning. So uh, so uh, from what is a uh, different between transport and mobility? I found uh, this uh, very concise explanation from Forum for the Futures organizations, one of the um, NGOs uh, that uh, focus in uh, sustainable transport. They say that transportation is the act of moving goods or people, where mobility is the ability to freely move or be moved. The important difference uh, here is the word of ability. Transportations. Uh, describe the act of moving something or someone 
whereas a mobility describes the ability of a person to move or be moved. In other words, transportation is something you do and mobility is something you have. And this is the, the new paradigm that should be uh, aware or uh, understood by, by transport, uh, transport planner in urban area. Because uh, why uh, the shift from transportation to mobility is a it's a indication that uh, uh, level of uh, development in uh, social uh, so, uh, social uh, social and environment uh, arena is a uh, more and more development uh, more and more developing and uh, become uh, concerns uh, to the uh, 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 to the policy makers and uh, the other one is a functional urban area and this is also a new uh, for indonesia uh, the, the before we only uh, what uh, recognizing uh, area or uh, boundary to do uh, transportation planning only based on the administration's uh, boundary whether, whether it is a cities or agency or provincials or Indonesians. Well, uh, in urban area, uh, sometimes the movement of goods and people uh, happened uh, beyond administration, across a boundary, administration boundary. So this is uh, also uh, give uh, complications uh, and uh, should uh, give a, a new, a change, a new paradigm uh, to the uh, urban transportation planning. And the last one is a uh, GSC, uh, is a gender equality and social inclusions. Uh, this is a uh, uh, this is very important for It's happened again, Ibu. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, probably uh, Pak Tori can switch off the camera. I think it will be lighten uh, the weight of the internet yeah, connection for him. Yeah, okay. Um, I think we'll wait a little bit. Yeah, I think he's uh, Mr. Uh, re logging. Yes. Mm, okay. Para tamu undangan yang sudah hadir di auditorium Mataram kami
I'm uh, sorry. <laughs> okay, Mr. Tori. Yeah. yeah. Sorry. Okay. okay. Let's continue. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so uh, this is the scenes uh, from uh, Jakarta uh, that uh, recently get a sustainable transport uh, award uh, from uh, from international organizations. And then one of the uh, important uh, important actions that they took is uh, they changing the paradigm in in, in developing good uh, transport system in Jakarta, which is they they make uh, uh, upside down hierarchy uh, pyramid uh, of the road users, where uh, they put uh, people who walks uh, as uh, the highest uh, rank uh, in the usage of uh, road space uh, in Jakarta. So they uh, develop a massive uh, pedestrian facilities and shadings, uh, including a good landscape uh, that make uh, people more pleasant to to walk uh, with good uh, seeming, seem, seamless connectivity with the cycling and public transport, just like uh, what we can see in the, from the pictures. Okay, so uh, with the challenge and, and the new paradigm in tra public uh, urban transport uh, planning, uh, there are expected results in urban transport planning. First is uh, improved accessibility for all. Uh, because they want to have a more inclusive urban transport systems and then decrease uh, of traffic congestion, pollution and accidents because these are externalities that uh, always uh, always happen hand in hand uh, whenever your motorization rate uh, increasing. And the uh, liability, uh, uh, double win, win-win uh, solution for people and business. Uh, this is also uh, have to be uh, considered uh, greatly in the uh, in the planning of urban transport. Specifically for Indonesia, uh, the Bapenas uh, would like to have sustainable mobility plan uh, for the metropolitan area to integrate the, the three uh, aspects. First is the uh, integration between uh, urban planning and transportation planning, and then the integration among all modes of transportation. And uh, the third point, integration of role in institutions and financing. Uh, this is a uh, specific for Indonesia. So with that uh, in mind, uh, I would like to uh, present the case study from the development of sustainable open mobility plan uh, for Sarba Kita metropolitan area in Bali. So uh, Bapena set a priority program uh, in, uh, in the National Development Plan uh, 2020 and 2024 to develop uh, mass public transit in uh, in metropolitan area. And then uh, to provide the financial aid uh, to the local government, uh, the Bapena requires readiness and eligibility criteria to be fulfilled by the local government. And one of it is they have to uh, develop a sustainable urban mobility uh, plan uh, for the metropolitan area. And this plan uh, 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 lies between the uh, medium development plan uh, and the uh, master plan of any transportations. Why? Because uh, in Indonesia jurisdictions, uh, the development of master plan based on the modes, whether it's a master plan for rail transport or uh, road transport, air transport or sea transport. Uh, and then uh, none uh, of the existing regulations uh, mandate uh, the development of uh, 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 master plans. So the SUMP serve uh, between the RPGMD uh, and the uh, master plan. And then uh, the phase and stage of the SUMP based on the guideline issued by the BAPANAS, there will be a five uh, phase and 12 stages uh, from preparation to development of the action plan. Uh, all in all, uh, should be uh, developed uh, with the principle of a participative planning process. 
So this is a, 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 the SUMP from Sabah Gita. Uh, the main uh, the main uh, goal is to preserve the the beauty and the excellence of Bali cultures that's uh, as, uh, famous uh, all around the world. And then this is the study study area. You can see here that uh, the the black boundary is the uh, administration boundary of uh, uh, for uh, local government uh, in Sarba Kita area. And then while the red and the green, uh, sorry, the yellow one is uh, the functional urban area that indicated by the the studies. The total functional urban area is a two seven hundred twenty four kilometers. It's a, it's a little bit bigger than Singapore, uh, with a twenty uh, two and a point one million populations, and which a uh, majority uh, 80, 80, 58 percent uh, living uh, outside the Denpasar. This is the Denpasar. And uh, the functional urban area here uh, covering 70% of the, all, the whole administration, uh, administrative area. So uh, the after setting the, setting the study area, uh, the next uh, stage is a vision, uh, developing the vision for the sustainable urban mobility. And then, uh, this vision should address uh, two uh, questions. Uh, what is the problem in the metropolitan area and how they want to have uh, in the futures uh, in terms of uh, mobility? Uh, so this is the result from the survey. Uh, problems is uh, the main problem is public transport coverage, uh, congestions, and poor quality of uh, public transport services. And then uh, what uh, people want to have uh, in the future of Sarbakita is a mass transit, which uh, can be interpreted as a public transport and reliable of uh, public transport services. And then uh, the vision goes, uh, goes on with the uh, process. Uh, all the all visions, uh, existing vision in the uh, existing uh, development plan and document uh, 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 extracted and then uh, we discuss with the, all the uh, stakeholders to develop the visions for Sarbagita SUMP. And then this is uh, the result uh, toward integrated connected cultural, sorry, toward integrated connected cultural, sustainable and humanist uh, Sarbagita metro transport to create welfare and happiness of Krama Bali. This is a, uh, uh, this is a, uh, uh, result of the visions based on the visions and then uh, the, the next stage is uh, to uh, to do a baseline analysis which can be divided into two mobility analysis and spatial analysis uh, so this is a uh, one uh, some of the uh, result of the baseline analysis and then uh, this is uh, the modeling that have been uh, developed uh, to understand the future state of uh, traffic in Sarbegita. Yeah, which is uh, uh, the result quite alarming that uh, there, there, are, there will be a average speed drop uh, of 11% uh, from 2020 to 2013. So, uh, based on the uh, problems uh, and analysis, uh, there's, uh, they make a strategy how to improve the mobility in Sarbakita area. You can see here from the diagrammatic uh, uh, map, uh, there's uh, all the, uh, the, the strategy to improve mobility in Sarbagita not only lies on the infrastructure of transportation, but also uh, incorporate the improvement of uh, uh, urban planning, uh, spatial planning, uh, and activities, uh, low income activities, low income uh, group activities, and then uh, resources, and also governance. So uh, there are six strategies 
uh, first is a, a strategy to uh, for the quality transit and then mobility improvement urban spatial improvement street vendor freight logistic and metropolitan governance so this is the scenario so you can see here that uh, the circle uh, yellow circle are the main uh, uh, activity centers in Sarbagita area uh, the the size uh, indicate the, the importance of the the locations and then uh, you can see uh, the red line uh, as uh, the main public transport corridor that's not only will be served uh, with the mass transit uh, in the futures, but also will uh, uh, will be developed as a high uh, density corridors uh, uh, to to accumulate the demand for a more efficient mass transit uh, operations. So uh, this is uh, this uh, so they they have uh, the develop uh, the main. Uh, public transport corridors and also the uh, the supporting uh, corridors and also the the future development of the uh, public transport corridors and all all already in, integrated between uh, spatial planning uh, urban urban planning uh, in the RTRW and HPMD and also uh, all the master plan uh, that they they already developed before. And then uh, this is the compatibility between strategy and the vision of Sarbagita as a checklist, uh, whether the strategy addressing all the visions uh, already uh, uh, agreed uh, by all the stakeholders. And the, the, the first strategy is a action plan, uh, strategy and action plan for uh, quality transits. There will be a service network development uh, all the municipalities, uh, local government in Sarbagita already agreed with the uh, uh, network's uh, service of uh, public transport. And then uh, the, uh, this uh, strategy experience also indicate the priority uh, action, uh, sorry, action to prioritize uh, the transit service and then to improve uh, tra transit uh, vehicles uh, to more modern uh, and more uh, more environmental friendly and then uh, improvement of the transit in uh, infrastructures and the uh, application of the ESC principle. And then uh, not only uh, improving the transit quality, but also uh, the the SUMP also improved the mobility of the people uh, by, uh, by providing push and pull measures uh, both uh, to, to limit the use of uh, private vehicles and pull measures to, to increase the use of public transport. And then, uh, aside from the push and pull, uh, there will be a policy and action to improve uh, a new cultures in transportation and urban transport. Because uh, because uh, most of uh, most of the actions need uh, behavioral change uh, 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 by the urban people when they doing uh, their uh, transport. And then uh, in the spatial improvements, uh, this is uh, this is uh, when if 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 the if the quality transits uh, lies the inter interaction between land use and transportation uh, infrastructure and services, the spatial improvement is uh, uh, imp improving uh, the corridors and also the hub of the of the transportations uh, corridor mean that uh, uh, along the corridor uh, not only uh, develop uh, in adjacent uh, uh, lane of uh, public transport but also uh, in the perpendicular of 
of the corridor so it can expand uh, the coverage of the public transport by improving the spatial like a pedestrian uh, POD pedestrian or the development and then the mixed use and the and uh, integration and accessibility of the kampung or the uh, villages and then, and then uh, developing high uh, high density area along the corridors uh, all in all to improve the uh, integrations and accessibility of uh, public transport where well, for the transportation hub uh, the plan the plan also indicate the development of transit transit oriented development and then uh, this is a, a very uh, it, this is very genuine uh, uh, strategy and action plan uh, uh, to manage the street vendor in Bali. Uh, why? Because uh, uh, fifty percent of the informal informal sectors uh, unemployment. Sorry, uh, fifty percent of the sorry, sixty percent. Sorry, sixty percent of the. Uh, Unemployment absorbed by informal sectors, where uh, uh, most of the informal sectors are uh, doing their business uh, as a street vendor. So, uh, and, uh, rather than uh, uh, treat them as a, as a problems, uh, uh, the the plan also treat them as a potentials, uh, potential part. Uh, the, sorry, as a important part of the corridor redevelopment uh, this is a uh, and then the for the logistic uh, manage uh, freight and logistic management they also provide a new uh, management planning uh, for freight and logistics and then to, uh, indicate the center of distributions and then to, uh, because of the high uh, development in online uh, based uh, commercial commerce, yeah, online commerce. Uh, so uh, they also introduce uh, uh, urban locker uh, to put uh, to put the the logistics uh, uh, the parcels uh, that that uh, uh, can be used by by both uh, people or the the uh, forwarder. And then uh, uh, model business uh, for for the logistics uh, based on the type of uh, business, yeah. Uh, so logistic uh, transport will be uh, developed based on the uh, uh, business type. This is very important because in in Bali. Uh, most of the goods uh, are, are uh, uh, transported uh, from outside the islands, uh, so uh, they they all use uh, some uh, some uh, quite the same uh, vehicles or or mode of transport uh, that not necessarily efficient uh, and give a good uh, reliable services. Uh, to deliver uh, those goods uh, to Bali, and then uh, uh, Bali should also in, uh, develop, establish uh, institutions who manage and oversee uh, the, the operation of uh, logistic systems. And then the last one is uh, regulation on of the logistic vehicles. Uh, this is the uh, metropolitan governance. Basically, uh, the SUMP uh, recommend to the develop to the establishment of the special institutions who will manage uh, the uh, metropolitan transport uh, operations. So uh, it's also it's also uh, it's, it's all it's already done in Bandung, uh, and then this is uh, this institution is. Uh, 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 included in the one of the readiness criteria uh, requested by the Bapanas for the financial aid uh, to develop a mass transit system in in Sarbagita. The last one, they 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 have action plans, so they also indicate the implementing schedules. 
and then uh, this is the uh, financial cooperations to indicate uh, which uh, action plan will get uh, from which sources of fundings uh, to implement so that's uh, that's my presentations uh, bu adel uh, hope uh, i can uh, give uh, a new um, informations and insights uh, on the latest development of transport urban transport planning in indonesia thank you okay. thank you for, uh, mr tori for sharing his knowledge it was very interesting presentation indeed and um if the audience have any questions please put your questions in the chat box and it will be answered later on um now let's proceed to our second speaker mr eduard di prahara okay uh mr eduard di prahara okay um i will introduce mr eduard first so uh, Mr. Eduardi graduated from uh, uh, from ITB uh, Bandung uh, for a graduate degree and for the postgraduate degree in transportation engineering in 1998. Um, now uh, Mr. Eduardi Di Prahara is a senior lecturer at Bina Nusantara University. And he also works uh, in World Bank Group in Indonesia for various projects. And he, so, sorry, uh, the screen is a bit blurred. <laughs> um, okay, so um, he was also involved as a public transport planner expert at PTSMEC, Denka Indonesia, and other various projects. Okay, uh, um, I think I will leave the floor to Mr. Eduardi, and we will have the question and answer later on. Okay, Mr. Eduardi, please. Thank you. Thank you, Thank you Boadel. <laughs> Thank you, everyone. Um, it's Pleasure to uh, present this uh, transportation insight uh, in this uh, sense. Uh, thank you very much for this opportunity. <clears throat> um, I will share my screen now. I will um, present about. Yeah. Can you see my screen now? Yes. Yes, yes. we can. Yeah. Okay. I will. Uh, I will discuss with you about uh, bus rapid transit inside yeah in, in 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 this is the most common indonesia's experience in uh, mass rapid transit okay and this uh, opportunity uh, very um very good for for us especially after pa tori said that this is uh, one of the uh, complementary from uh, after Pak Tori uh, said about uh, Indonesia uh, uh, mass rapid transit. <clears throat> so um, let's start here. In 2003, we did the forecasting of DKI Jakarta and Jabodetabek. So let me uh, flashback first. Yeah. So in 2000. Uh, in 2003, uh, transportation agency in uh, Jakarta said uh, make a forecasting about the the area of the road versus vehicle. It means cars, okay? And then it become crossing in 2014. So this is very frightening for us uh, in 2003. This is frightening news for us. So uh, it becomes like you cannot go anywhere in 2014 uh, if you do nothing about transportation. Okay. So uh, then it 
it becomes uh, 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 let's say it become a, a concept or, or background for the government to decide what to do with the transportation. And then uh, CITRAM, as the study on integrated transportation master plan for Jabritabek, uh, 2004, uh, make a, uh, if you like this, yeah, fee ratio in 2002, if you uh, just let this business as usual, it becomes uh, the fee ratio will be uh more than one in all over the segment of the road in Jabarintabik. So it will be very frightening for us. Okay. This is uh this is the the news that we have to do something about our um our transportation, especially in uh, DKI Jakarta. So what is the solution? BRT. Yes bus rapid transit so that so that that is the the, the first time that brt in jakarta trans jakarta uh, became uh, implemented <clears throat> so this is one solution okay now in 2000 and, uh, sorry 2004 brt system uh, uh, introduced in 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 jakarta and now it's uh, become four uh, for the six routes, 251 kilometer route length, 4,300 buses, and 1 million passenger per day uh, into 2020. Yeah, uh, I don't know. Pak Tori said this is only 500,000, not 1 million. Pak Tori, yeah. sorry for that. Pak Tori. Uh, this is from uh, yeah, due, uh, due to cost COVID, Pak. Oh, okay, post COVID. Okay, this is a trans from Jakarta trans Jakarta website, Pak. Okay, so uh, wow, this is good. This is this is our solution for for uh, BR uh, for for transportation in in Jakarta. But welcome to Jakarta, everybody. <laughs> in uh, 2021, uh, 2021, Jakarta traffic index is. Uh, uh, 46 word rank uh, from uh, Tom Tom, I think. Yeah, yeah. So the congestion level it becomes 34 percent. It means like if you uh, travel 30 minutes uh, in free flow condition, it becomes 40 minutes, or you have a delay about 10 minutes. 34 percent congestion line. So what happened? We we already have BRT. What happened? What happened? So this is the the question that we have to discuss. What happened? Why why it it is happened right now? Especially now today, 2022, it still uh, happened. Yeah. Uh, in peak hour, morning and afternoon peak hour. This is what happened. So if we take the model share or for public transport, let's compare it with Hong Kong. Hong Kong is it the blue one. Uh, the private, sorry, the, the, the black red here, the private transport is only 11% of the total uh, uh, transportation in Hong Kong. In Taipei, is only 46% of private transport. Jakarta, 62%. Okay, so what, what is the meaning of this 62%? So, um, uh, modal share for public transport is Jakarta now, so it's 27%. It means like 27% uh, people using public transport, including MRT. We have a MRT right now, LRT, only one LRT. BRT, this is Transjakarta with 1 million passenger per day. Uh, Angkot, uh, Feeder, uh, Grab, Gojek, and, also, and all, all other public transport, okay? 
why it still happen? Why is still uh, macet in Jakarta? What is traffic jam in Jakarta still happen? Because the Jakarta daily trips, it's 15 to 20 million trips per day. So um, if Transjakarta only 500 of 1,000 passenger per day, or maybe 2 million trips per day, it's only, I don't know. We have a fifth, five, see, let's see 27% from uh, 20 million is about 5.4 million trips per day. So 5.4 million trips per day using public transport. Uh, what happened for the rest? 15 million. So still using private car, private transport. So this is the problem. This is our problem now. And if we want to increase the model share for public transport, can our public transport capacity meet them? Uh, that's that's the question. So we have to we have to um, we have to uh, increase our capacity in public transport. So what about the other metropolitan cities in Indonesia? Let's say Surabaya, 9 million population. The model share of public transport is less than 5%. This is very frightening. Bandung, metropolitan area. This is Surabaya city. This is Bandung metropolitan area, uh, Bandung and surrounding area. 9 million population, the model share is less than 10%. Medan, metropolitan area, 4.9 million population, the model share less than 7%. Semarang, 1.8 million population, the model share is less than 7%. So, what is... Um, indication in our daily life uh, based on a source from World Bank in 2019, uh, the peak hour speed in our big cities in Indonesia, like for example, Jakarta Pusat here, 17.5 km per hour. It's very, very low. Semarang, Samarinda, Mojokerto, you can see here. Bekasi, 90.7. Probolinggo, 16. Depok, 17. So um, this is the indi indication of we need public transport. We need we need people to 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 share the the public transport. We need people to, to shift from private car to public transport. So the question is, who will build that, this public transport? Can those cities, can these cities, Surabaya, Bandung, Medan, Semarang, and other metropolitan cities, have mass transportation system? So best uh, from the World Bank studies, also in 2019, most of cities lack of fiscal capacity to implement mass rapid transit system. Cost of implementing 20 kilometer of LRT exceeds the borrowing capacity. The borrowing capacity, not, not the, the capacity, not the, the, the budget, but the borrowing capacity of all Indonesian cities except Jakarta. So Jakarta can only build 20 kilometers of LRT with their borrowing capacity. Okay, this is very sad. Uh, only seven cities have sufficient borrowing capacity to meet the cost of BRT system of 30 kilometers. 30 kilometers. Transjakarta have 200 and 15 kilometers with borrowing capacity. Moreover, <laughs> based on 
uh, local budget, this is local budget, APBD, largest cities data in 2015, cities only allocated between 0.13 to 1.53% of their budget for public transport capital expenditures. So this is our problem. Our city cannot build the BRT system. Is that true? Let's talk about next. No, all the city has already have BRT <laughs> long time ago with limited result. For example, Jakarta, yes, yeah, bus, busway as Transjakarta 2004. Batam has Trans Batam since 2005. Bogor has Trans Pakuan since 2008. Semarang has Trans Semarang. Pekanbaru has Trans Metro Pekanbaru. And all of the city has their BRT. So, um, what it mean? Why? Why this is limited result of this uh, BRT? Um, this is because the central bus purchasing scheme from uh, central government only focus on providing bus on a once-off basis and little attention to quality of operation and maintenance. So this program, this scheme from uh, central government only give the bus. This is your bus. Please implement the uh, mass rapid transit. That's all. Okay. So, and then now, now in 2019, until now, the central government uh, authority, uh, transportation authority, central government, launched the BTS scheme. BTS is by the service scheme to providing bus with management and oversight by uh, Director General of Land Transport. This is, uh, this is uh, you know, now they, they learn from the mistakes uh, last, uh, last 10 years, and then they give the scheme of the by the, by the service scheme and um, to the those metropolitan area and um, with with this scheme it reflects that constrained regulatory framework which allowed in kind of support to local government you know there is no uh, no regulatory to how to uh, help um, local government to maintain their uh, transportation system because the transportation system in local government in that city is responsible by their city not central government so the regulatory is very very uh, very very um, need to uh, need to assess about how to help the local government to uh, build the transportation system. So what is meant by this BRT? I think uh, if we look at this uh, figure, you can see that the BRT means this one is only a regular bus, right? There's no dedicated lane. Yeah. Right now, there's no dedicated lane for that BRT. Okay, what means by dedicated lane? It means like um, <clears throat> really, really like Trans Jakarta. So in Semarang, there's no dedicated lane for Trans Metro Semarang. There's no dedicated lane from Trans Batam, Trans Jogja, Trans I don't know, whatever. Eh? So it's only serve nine thousand passenger per hour per direction. So, so this is not cannot be compete with other private transportation. So if we have the BRT single line, single lane, we can increase double eighty thousand. Okay. So to create the ridership, BRT need facilities. Okay. 
to create the ridership, BRT need facilities. What facilities? Dedicated lane. Yeah. Information system. Payment system. Pedestrian facilities. Those four items is very, very urgent for build the BRT. So BRT is not only the bus. BRT is not only the route. BRT is not only the corridor. But BRT is dedicated lane. So the travel time will be shortened. The travel time compared with the private vehicle will be short. We have the information system where the bus is coming, when the bus is coming on the bus stops. We have the payment system, typing, uh, cashless, and also the pedestrian facilities. It means like a big pedestrian facilities with uh, the crossing bridge, with uh, convenience, uh, bus stops, and etc. So high capacity transportation system needs high quality facilities. So this is this is the concept that we have to make it sure that uh, local government have uh, to implement all the BRT concepts to increase the the model share. So this is the BRT, the the better BRT. Uh, why? Because it's reduced travel time. Saving travel time at bus stop and while underway. Uh, it is common that for 30 to 40 percent of the BRT travel time, it's in bus stops, right? So to increase the, to reduce the uh, travel time in bus stops, we have to prepare the cashless payment. Okay. And the other thing is important is improve the reliability. This is the like uh, minimizing all factors that can interfere vehicle flow and providing responsive management control. Yeah, this is dedicated lane. We have to we have to uh, minimizing all the factors like uh, traffic light, uh, intersection, and other uh, other uh, infrastructure that can interfere. The third one is upgraded human amenities, which is uh, providing attractive facilities. This is attractive facilities, like uh, good or better bus stops, convenience bus stop, spaces inside and outside the vehicle, uh, and offering useful information to riders. So how to, to attract the riders to use the BRT. And the last one is improve the safety. This is the providing monitoring system, um, removing potentially dangerous features and bringing many riders into the system. Uh, how to improve the safety, like uh, there's a CCTV on the bus right now. Um, we can uh, make sure uh, there's no accident, etc. So this is the uh, um, example of the dedicated lane for the busway. You can see this is from uh, basic design uh, feasibility study of uh, BRT Semarang. Uh, we have to uh, build, so Semarang want to build the BRT system uh, next year, I think. Yeah. Uh, so they have they have to build the dedicated lane for this BRT. Why? Because we have to we have to uh, achieve all of this this uh, this requirement. Yeah, we need about ten meters here, three point one, three point five. Yeah, about ten meters along the road for the dedicated lane. 
and when you go to the bus stop we still need have uh, 10 meters right because the the lane will be uh, will be narrow it three meters from 3.4 in the bus stop will be three meters and the bus stop itself is about three meters and it's become like nine meters so we have to uh, take the right of way about 10 meters it can be in the middle or in the side of the road it's no problem why it's no problem because we're using the low floor buses yeah low floor buses transjakarta still using high floor deck yeah not the low floor deck uh why this is a uh, 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 important what is the benefit is you know that this is the uh for the accessible for the disability uh very access uh, from the side of the road and etc so low entry is very um good for for passengers with uh, convenience for passengers especially for disabled so um i think this is the the last one so uh we can uh compare uh, what is the cost for dedicated lane uh, for BRT. It is in, include the bus stop, include the, the, the pedestrian facilities and etc. Uh, like Bandung, they have two of uh, BRT lines. Uh, this is an investment cost, uh, excluding the fleet per corridor is about $140 million so the investment cost of capex capital expenditure is about 6.3 million per kilometer for medan and semarang is uh, different so estimated cost per kilometer for brt is about 6 million per kilometer um it's about 19 uh, million 90 billion, billion per kilometer in billion yes billion per kilometer uh, rupiah uh, if you want to build 20 kilometer <laughs> you have a uh, oh uh, yeah 100 200 and 300 million so this is uh, what what uh, what we have to do to serve the public to serve the people with public transport but not not the regular public transport but the high quality of public transport why because how we have we have to uh, 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 attract the ridership we have to attract people to use brt okay so the conclusion is yeah there's no one solution for urban transport right uh we have brt like jakarta no we we have to use uh, mrt why because the like i said before because the trips per day is billion trip per day is uh, sorry million trips per day uh let's say uh Smarag have nine million people trips per day roughly estimated about 1.8 sorry 18 we can we can uh, we can double it to the trips per day 18 million people per day so 18 million people will come and go in Semarang per day so how we serve that trips per day with only BRT, <laughs> okay. So this is the this is the uh, we can discuss about it and use the dedicated lane because the service become competitive. If we don't use a dedicated lane, no. Like uh, it's better using Gojek, right? The travel speed is higher than 
using a bus. That's not competitive. Okay. And the other thing is uh, financial support from central government is very important, or other donors. So the local government is, cannot build their own a BRT system. Central government must help them. Must help them. Must help them. The other thing that is most important is transport authority. So metropolitan area is comprised of not only the city, but the surrounding area, right? If the transport authority is only the city, they cannot regulate the surrounding area. So we have to make the new authority that covers all the metropolitan area. So the transport authority at LG level is not appropriate to plan and manage transport in metropolitan area. They have the new authority to plan, to manage, to implement transport in metropolitan area. I think that's all from my uh, presentation, Bu Adel. Thank you very much. And back to you. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much for the in very interesting presentation. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Please, uh, if there's any questions, please submit it in chat box. I already have uh, two burning questions, but I will leave it for later. <laughs> um, okay. Thank you, uh, Mr. Edwardi. And I would like to continue our our session to the third speaker. Uh, and it will be headed by Dr. Andreas Rau. And he is a transportation engineer working at TUM, Asia Singapore, as the faculty head and principal investigator for rail transport and logistics. He was principal investigator of Petro Transport Group in TUM Create Singapore from 2011 until 2021. His significant research experience contributed in public transport planning, development and implementation workshops and research projects funded by public transport authorities and education institutes in Germany and Singapore. With a strong academic and teaching background, Dr. Rao was the founding director of Master of Science programs at the TU München and the German Institute of Science and Technology, TUM Asia, Singapore. He is a frequent speaker in seminars, conference, and training from all around the world. Dr. Rao's uh, research interests are in the area of public transport planning, especially for developing and emerging countries. This stretches from the network planning, the creation of integrated transport chain to the optimization of bus lines, the scheduling of transit lines for buses and trains, from the design of the timetable until the creation of duties and rosters for the drivers are also topic covered by Dr. Rao. Assessment methods for transport infrastructure and policies for a sustainable transport system development are research interests of Dr. Rao as well. Now, uh, we will listen to uh, the presentation from uh, Dr. Rao. Uh, floor is yours. Okay, good, good morning also from my side. Let me share my screen. Not yet. Can you see my screen? Yes, can. Okay, okay then, yeah, then uh, welcome to the last presentation in this uh, seminar. Um, I was uh, thinking, yeah, um, well, I was preparing some slides um, to answer the question, how to build a good public transport system? What should we do? And um, I must admit, uh, Eduardi, he answered already. I mean, I can stop already. Maybe I, I give a little bit additional information. <laughs> uh, but, uh, some of the, because some of the things you, you have presented, they are also part of my slides. Okay, maybe um, I would I would like to discuss in my presentation this question: uh, Why, na, in some situations, the same planning method or technology leads sometimes to an improvement in public transport system, and why sometimes not? 
Um, I mean, uh, the answer I think you all know. Uh, um, it only works uh, uh, if the plan we would like to implement is supported uh, on all planning hierarchy levels and, of course, must be supported by all involved stakeholders. If it's not the case, it will not work. And that's um, what does it mean? Um, that's yeah, uh, the topic of the next uh, 25 minutes. So my agenda is, uh, I would like to discuss the hierarchy of policies, plans, and strategies, uh, which are necessary to fulfill uh, a good, or to create a good uh, public transport system. Also, the hierarchy of stakeholders in planning and controlling public transport. And the last point, hierarchy of transport system design instruments. But of course, I will show you some as I will show you, of course, the hierarchy, but supporting this with some examples from Singapore and Germany. Okay, let's start with number one. Um, what is the hierarchy of policies, plans, and strategies? This is what I think, no? so we have different levels, uh, and all the levels, of course, needs to be uh, supporting uh, the lower levels or vice versa. No? So we, we start on the highest point. So we need a policy framework. So it means how we want our urban transport policy. After we have this, this of course is politics. No? So we need to think what kind of strategies uh, we have to implement to reach this policy. So for example, also what kind of procedures or what kind of regulation. Mm -hmm. Later, of course, we need to think how, how to implement this. So it means what kind of plans and what kind of programs we have to set up to support the, uh, the to really fulfill the, the higher levels. Yeah? And after, of course, we can start with management and, of course, enforcement, the lowest levels operation. I mean, this, of course, I think you all know it makes sense. No? So maybe I'll just show you how Singapore is doing this. Let's start with the highest one, policy framework. It means policy framework done in Singapore. No? So it means if you're checking uh, what the transport policy of Singapore is, now we say it's a people-centered land transport system. No? Um, reduce reliance on cars and increase public transport mode share. And then you can see even uh, uh, already a very precise target. No? Uh, in 2030, uh, the, the target is 75% 75, 75 of journeys made on public transport during peak period. So it means the mode, mode share during peak hours, of course. No? Uh, the target is to reach 75% 75%. Now we are uh, around 69, 68%. Also already a very high level of public transport. Okay, now that's a nice policy target. Now we have to think how to how to make it real. So the next one, we need strategies. Yeah, and uh, Singapore says uh, we have three main strategies. No? First one, making public transport a choice mode. So it means it's really an, alter an alternative now. So it's fast, reliable, yeah? enhancing livability. And very important, uh, number one works only if number three is done at the same time. We have to manage road and vehicle growth. So it means number one and three uh, needs, to, needs to be done together. Otherwise, it's not working. But of course, now, uh, still nice, nice ideas. No? Now we have to go one level down. So how to implement this? And of course, now, Singapore is using different plans. The first one, of course, now, uh, it's, uh, we have an integrated land use and transport master plan. So both are developed together and both are having long-term vision in mind. And of course, we are updated together. So it means 
uh, if uh, we are developing uh, a new neighborhood, uh, we know how the public transport system and how the road system in the future will also look like. And of course, because both plans are working together, uh, so we, we reserve the space for later maybe creating a MRT line or maybe uh, extend uh, or improve public transport. So it's possible. That's the first one. And of course, uh, as I mean, uh, in Munich or Germany is doing the same. Ne? Once we have a plan, uh, we follow the plan. We are not changing our plan every every five years, ne? because new government is coming. Of course, with modification, of course, modifications are necessary, but the long-term objectives, of course, is never changing. The next one, of course, um, we need we need transport demand management the next lower level. No? So it means we need, like Eduardi also already told, and the, uh, the first presenter also told, no? we need the push and pull methods. No? So it means we have to restriction private traffic, improvements public transport, and needs to be done together. No? We have to push people out of the car and pull them into the bus or into the public transport system. And this needs to, work, needs to be done together. Again, uh, a very nice theoretical concept. Now, of course, how it's done in Singapore. I think most of us, you know, no? so uh, we have a lot of very painful instruments no? to reduce the usage of private car traffic. No? We have the electronic road pricing, no? we have a certificate of entitlement, so the number of cars, the, the, uh, or the number of cars in Singapore is fixed. The, the growth rate for private cars is 0%. And of course, if we don't have, if we do not have a growth rate, in this case, of course, we also have, we have no uh, worsening congestion problem. No? So if we don't have more cars, congestion cannot get worse. We have additional registration fee, so it means it's very expensive to buy a car. Huh? And of course, uh, it's not possible to park for free in Singapore. Um, in, in Germany is different, so many cities are still offering uh, parking for free. But our side, now you can see, uh, I think the, the ERP, the old pricing system, uh, is a congestion charging, uh, and the, the price you have to pay depends on the traffic volume. Okay, now of course, um, what we are doing to improve public transport, you yeah, can see the target now, increase peak hour public transport mode to 75%. In 2019, uh, we had already 67%, very high level. Yeah. Again, how, how to reach this? Uh, it needs a lot of investment in public transport, yeah, and Singapore's investing a lot in improving the MRT system. Uh, today we have 230 kilometers uh, and in 2030 we have 360. And this is not the end. Now uh, there are more lines under planning. We need a better integration of bus and rail network. Of course also uh, improving the situation for pedestrians and for cyclists. Uh, and of course integration, uh, more bike and ride schemes, also to integrate bicycle uh, riding with public transport usage. Okay, now of course, sounds good, but now we have to think um, how to reach the target uh, um, by giving which task to what kind of stakeholders. Okay, in, in general, I think you all know, no? uh, so uh, we have long-term planning, medium, no? and we have short-term planning. And now, of course, we have to think no? um, who, of us, who of the stakeholders is in charge for this. No? So it means you can see that's a, a picture of stakeholders in Germany. No? So in Indonesia, it's a little bit different, no? but I mean, we have, uh, we have the government, no? we have the passengers, 
we have operators, we have the employees, we have passengers, and, and we all are a part of public transport now, and we all more or less involved uh, in designing and, and yeah, planning uh, public transport or having requirements. Now, of course, we can think, um, how can we reach this, or how can we structure uh, the different tasks, and who is doing what? You can see now, of course, the highest level, transport policies, transport planning, uh, of course, should be done by the government, by public transport authorities. Now we have the next one. So medium, you can see medium is already now network planning, uh, uh, designing the framework for the scheduling, creating it, what, what, what is the operation time, uh, uh, quality standards, also how much people have to pay, and also, of course, uh, work on the image. And this, of course, all can be done already, can also by, can be done by the public transport authorities. If you're doing this in this way, of course, now, in this case, uh, you have a consistent plan. Now, and if you want, for example, an integrated tariff system, now, in this case, it's possible to implement because it's done by the government. But the lowest level, now, we have the operational level now, done by the public transport operators. Now. now, of course, we're really doing the operation. Now. Now, we're doing, we're employing the captains, the bus drivers, or the train drivers, we're doing the maintenance, yeah? and, and we're doing the entire operation. And you can see, of course, this, of course, should be done by the operators, but some of the tasks can, on the tactical level, can also be done by the public transport operators, depends what kind of transport policy you have in mind. So it means there are different methods. No? And first, you need to define what kind of policy, what you want to reach in the future. Based on this, you need to allocate the task, either give it to the public transport authority or give it to the public transport operators. And this, of course, needs to be, as a well, the way you are designing or you're giving the task needs to support the targets no? we have discussed first. Okay, now already uh, the last the last point. The hierarchy of transport system design instruments. This sounds uh, very complicated, but what I have in mind is a little bit simple. No? So we have transport planning at the higher level, followed by transport operation and management. Here also, no? the transport planning no? uh, needs to be in line with operation and management and vice versa. Also the operation needs to be supporting no? the higher level planning. Okay, now of course we can, we can already answer uh, my question, how to build a good public transport system. I think the answer is, we need an integration of different public transport modes supported by a public transport oriented transport policy. So if this is the supporting is missing, in this case, we can improve a lot or we can invest a lot, no? but uh, people will not change uh, from private car traffic to uh, public transport. No? The entire policy needs to be public transport oriented. Okay, yeah, and now, of course, I think a similar slide uh, we just have seen uh, in the previous lesson or in the previous presentation. Uh, um, what does it mean? Uh, and one of the key things is we need an integration of different public transport modes. So it means we have to do a planning of network transfer station. This needs to be supported uh, by coordinated scheduling, so if uh, persons need to transfer, uh, must be convenient transfer station. Uh, uh, we have to reduce waiting time. If, for example, the bus is running on a longer headway, uh, we need to make sure uh, 
the waiting time is minimized, we need to integrate it tariff structure. So it means it doesn't matter if you're using a bus or MRT or BRT, no? uh, you can pay with the same method and it's the same tariff. We have to provide passenger information. So people need to know how to travel and we need a traffic control center no? to coordinate the entire traffic and in case of, of any disturbances, uh, so we can guide and guide the passengers and also give information uh, to the bus captains uh, how to react if, for example, with an accident or we have congestion somewhere. Okay, uh, what is the meaning of the hierarchical public transport layer structure? So it means now uh, the same like a, like a road, uh, 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 like uh, the, the road infrastructure, no? we have in public transport different layers. No? In road infrastructure, the highest levels are the expressways, no? followed by the maybe materials and so on. The same idea or the same concept we need to create for public transport. No? The highest level is metro system, no? MRT, running fully independent on a right of the category A, highest capacity, no? fast, but of course, very high investment. No? This needs to be supported by a LRT or maybe by a bus rapid transit system no? with dedicated lane, I, I agree. No? Without dedicated lanes, dedicated lanes, I mean right of way category B. No? No? We, have, we have his own right of way. Otherwise, it's not fast enough. No? People will not really use. A BRT without dedicated lane is not really working. No? And the next lower level is a bus now, uh, now running in, in mixed traffic, no? also no dedicated lane. No? This is a feeder system for the bus rapid transit or for the LRT system. And the lowest one is first last mile, how people are coming from their house no? to the next stop. Also running on mixed traffic. No? And we need to integrate this. So it means the lower level needs to be supporting the higher level. Okay, just a few examples. Uh, what is a network planning and network density under this yeah, uh, objectives? An example from Munich. Uh, in Munich, uh, I would say we, uh, we can split the public transport system in two layers. No? Uh, we have a trunk line network no? that consists of MRT and regional trains. And you can see here all the large stops. At all the large stops, no? uh, we are connecting this trunk line network to a feeder network. And this feeder network consists of streetcar and bus. No? You can see here all the, the different stops. So at the same we have convenient transfer stations, and it's very easy to transfer from trunk to feeder or from feeder to trunk. No? Feeder network much more dense, no? but not so slow, uh, slower than, than higher level and has less capacity. Trunk system, no? not so dense, no? because it needs higher investment, high capacity, no? also high frequency, but it needs to be supported. It needs to be supported by the feeder network no? because the network is not so dense, so difficult, or is more difficult to reach a station no? because we want fast journey speed. The high journey speed means we need less stops. Okay. Also, uh, integrated planning. Uh, or uh, a network or a net, uh, is, is very important. A very good example, um, how disruptive uh, uh, not integrated network can be, we could see for many, many years in Bangkok. Um, you can see the first line, the first MRT line in Bangkok was the blue line. And later, uh, the purple line came. But during the first years, you can see it was a gap. It was a one kilometer gap. Uh, and because of this, the ridership 
in the purple line was extremely low. You can see now that's a, a picture from Bangkok Post I was reading in 2016. Of course, the gap now is solved, but you can see how it works. You can see the plan, the purple line that have about 100,000 people a day. But because of this missing link, we reached only 20,000 people. Uh, and even you can see now, so we gave uh, a discount of ticketing now to only 2,000 people came, ex came extra. And that's a clear indication now. You need, you need connectivity. So if you ask people, use MRT, later use a bus, use MRT again, it will not work. So the ridership will be very, very low. Also connectivity, very important. The next important thing is network density. Um, this is um, a map uh, in the, yeah, the green line shows the, the rail system in Jakarta. And with the same scale, I put Paris on top. It's with exactly the same scale. I mean, it's a little bit unfair uh, because here, of course, the LRT, the LRT and the MRT is missing. Uh, but even if we include them, you can see how dense, how dense the MRT and the regional rail network in Paris compared to Jakarta is. Uh. That means only if you have very, very high density, uh, in, this case of, in this case, people will switch uh, from private car traffic to public transport. So it means one or two lines, of course, it will help a little bit. It will, but you will not have a, a large change in, in mode shift from private car traffic to public transport. Only you have a high density system. The yeah. other thing is we need an integrated ticketing system. And that's, for example, you can see it almost everywhere in Germany. Singapore also uh, is doing the same way. Né? Like you can see how it works. That's the area of Frankfurt. Né? Frankfurt Airport is, is somewhere here. Né? And um, if you're traveling in this area, it doesn't matter if you're using a regional train, a streetcar, MRT, or bus. Né? You have one ticket. And it's distance based. You just buy one ticket, uh, you're counting through how many zones you are traveling. And the price depends on how many zones you are traveling. So it's distance based. And not if you're using maybe a bus, later change to MRT, change to streetcar. Everything is distance based. You can transfer, and there's no punishment if you're transferring. In this case, people will say we have no problems to transfer. But if you're going back to such uh, integrated tariff system, no? if you want to set up this, it only works no? if you have a good allocation of responsibilities between authority and operators. No? So if each operator has in his own tariff and we are not working together, or maybe we are really uh, doing competition, no? so with this, the different different bus operators are really fighting for the bus passengers. In this case, of course, it will not work. No? So it means you need for authority who says, I'm setting the tariff and I'm telling how much, is, how much you have to pay. And the operators needs to follow. In this case, you can do no? If the operators are doing this, of course, it will not work. The same for integrated network planning. No? If you really want that people use uh, bus as a feeder and later change maybe to bus rapid transit or to change to MRT. No? In this case, of course, uh, the operators should not work against. No? See, I want to hold my passengers in the bus and I do not want that we transfer to bus rapid transit or to MRT because I won't have a revenue. No? So in this case, of course, uh, it will not work. Okay, that's already my last slide as a summary. No? So it means uh, transport policies, plans, and strategies need to be consistent no? on all levels with no contradiction inside. No? We need long-term planning no? and 
the implementation on a lower level will only be successful if supported on the higher level planning as well. And of course, uh, the stakeholder hierarchy of planning and control must also support the transport planning objectives. Okay, and that's all. Thank you very much. And uh, of course, now we can have some question and answer session. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much, Dr. Andres. And now um, we would like to proceed with um, question and answer sessions. And I, oh, okay. If you have any questions, please write it in the chat box or you can just raise your hand and um, you can ask the speakers right away. Okay, maybe to start, I would like to ask, um, maybe, maybe actually the same questions for uh, Mr. Eduardi and Mr. Tori about the competitiveness of uh, public transport and the private vehicles, like the usage in Indonesia. Do you think it's related to the culture as in with the people behavior, like, because, based on one of a uh, small research that I did with my student, we had an LRT in um, connecting in North Jakarta in Kelapa Gading area. And one of the f uh, finding was people, people were agree, like, people agree that the facility was good. The staff were very, very friendly. The route was clear, but then nobody wants to use it. And then even if they want to use it, they only use it for to try to try the LRT because they've never tried LRT before, and they just going there for like um for for fun, like it's not anything any specific purpose or if as if they want to go somewhere. So they just use it just to like maybe like on Sunday they want to take their kids for, to ride for a train ride. So um, I don't know. Do you think it's related to the culture because um. As explained by Dr. Andreas, like we need um, the higher planning for to attract public to want to use transport. But then, do you think it's the culture in Indonesia um, that our MRT and LRT or even bus it's not very used by our people? Will we answer first? <laughs> oh, me. Okay, Bu. Thank you very much for the. Uh, uh, questions, uh, Pak Tore, saya dulu ya. Um, no, that's not our culture, Bu. <laughs> uh, like public transport. Uh, what? Sorry, for the beginning, to, for planning public transport, yeah, we need to know what is the demand for the public transport. The demand first, Bu. So. For BRT or MRT or LRT, the the demand uh, related to density area, for for example, a business area. Yeah, so the trips will be go there. Yeah, so this is the demand uh, and, and 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 supply uh, rules. Something like that. If you build a MRT or BRT or LRT like Kelapa Gading, there's no you, you can you can first you can um, uh, guess or or estimate it who will using that uh, facilities. Who will using that? Is that is there any 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 uh, business area or mall or uh, attractive area from that side. So I, I think the Kalapa Gading LRT is built for the Asian Games, something that's it. So so this is the first, <laughs> the first like like uh, LRT in Palembang, right? This is for only for uh, some, only for one. Okay, and there's no planning at all. Yeah, there's no big planning like uh, Mr. Andreas said. <laughs> There's no big planning uh, policy, something like that. So, so that's that's why uh, the LRT is uh, there's no people using that. Yeah, I think I think that's my answer. Okay, thank you yeah. very much, 
Edward nih. Um. Oh. Oke. Okay. Oh, uh, my turn. Oke. Okay. Let me give uh, 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 what uh, a big picture for for the one who not familiar with the LRT system uh, in, in Jakarta. So yes, uh, in Jakarta the, we have uh, three uh, rail systems uh, in operations. One is the commuter rails, uh, which is uh, serving all the metropolitan area. 171 kilometers. It's running well with uh, 800,000 uh, passenger per day. And the second one is the MRT, uh, 14 kilometer from Lebak Bulus to HI. Uh, it's uh, in the during peak before the COVID, uh, they can serve uh, 110,000 uh, passenger per day. From the the initial initial predictions it's only 65,000 passenger per day well the lrt the that uh, Adil mentioned is um, it's only 5 and 5.8 kilometers uh, with the uh, approximately 1000 passenger per day from the initially uh, predicted uh, 12,000 12 to 19,000 uh, passenger per day First of all, I would I want to discuss uh, about the culture, culture uh, the term culture, yeah, Bu Adelia. Uh, I think uh, we are not in the stage of uh, having uh, public transport cultures, especially public uh, for the LRT. Yes, maybe we have a culture for uh, from the KRL, the commuter rails, and now it's developing culture from the MRT. Why? Because those two systems uh, serving uh, provide a uh, sufficient service for the demand, just like what Pa Edu uh, said. Well, in the LRT Jakarta, which only 5.8 kilometers, uh, it's not yet any cultures uh, rather than a behaviors. Uh, while they prefer, uh, behave differently uh, to LRT compared to MRT and the uh, commuter rails, yeah, because it's uh, because uh, the LRT Jakarta do not serve any particular uh, uh, traffic need, uh, uh, trans, uh, uh, trip trip yeah trip purpose. It's a very short and it's not connected with other rail systems. Uh, 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 Different, different from from KR, uh, MRT and uh, commuter rail. There's uh, they uh, they uh, serving each others, uh, and also they can supported uh, with the uh, BRT as a feeders. It's also uh, already developed with uh, good uh, transfer and uh, trans, uh, transfer facilities. So so yeah, it's, it's uh, and then. Uh, It's uh, it's just a new uh, it just it just was a, a first phase of the LRT Jakarta. Uh, now they are uh, planning to extend uh, the LRT Jakarta from Kelapa Gading to Jakarta International uh, Stadiums, the new sport facilities, uh, uh, and then uh, also from Velodrome to the station Halim for the high speed rail to Bandung. Hopefully, after uh, uh, it connected to other uh, rail systems, uh, it will improve uh, uh, the service uh, to to serve uh, to serve uh, demand uh, along the routes, and uh, they can uh, develop uh, culture in uh, using rail system in LRT. Maybe can I give my opinion? Yes, yes, sure. Yeah, because I, I, I'm a, I'm not an Indonesian, but I would say it's not a cultural problem because also it's clearly not a cultural problem because you can see this uh, this problem in many other cities as well. Um, the, the issue is uh, at the end uh, we are all optimizing our trip, so it means we are checking what is I'm going from origin to destination and I'm checking what is the best option for me to reach 
So when I'm checking how comfortable it is, how much I have to pay, and how fast it is. Uh, and uh, if, I'm, if I have a very limited uh, mass rapid transit or LRT system, um, in this case, the, the possible trips which are really useful for me to use LRT is very limited. So if I have, um, if, if I have maybe first, I have to go from my house to a bus stop. Yeah? So I have a first last mile problem, maybe not comfortable to walk. Then I use a bus. Later I transfer to a to the LRT or MRT, later transfer back to a bus, and then I have a last mile. So if uh, in, no one is using this, in this case, I, I have an option to use my private car. Of course, I use my private car. Huh? That's why what I mean with network density. So if you have only very limited mass rapid transit, yeah, the usage is low. Now you, you can see the same problem in Bangkok, uh, the blue line. I don't know how it's now, but uh, uh, last before pandemic, um, the, the stations, if you're using them, they are designed for a six car train. We're operating a three car train. It's fully, su fully sufficient ne? because the demand is low. Ne? I, in August, I went to Chennai. Uh, I saw the same. Ne? Uh, the MRT, very nice. The station has a capacity of a six car train. We're operating a four-core train, and it's sufficient because network density low, and also to use compared to use bus or private car, quite expensive. You know, to use the system, no, no integration. Okay, all right. Okay, thank you so much for the answers. Um, and. Another question that I also have, maybe for Mr. Eduardi, Mr. Tori, and uh, Dr. Andreas. I've read maybe uh, some time ago that the energy used per person for people riding a train is bigger than the energy per person using cars. Uh, is that true? And if that's true, would it be sustainable, like a sustainable option for public? because the amount of energy used in trains is higher than a per person if using vehicle. Uh, it's depend on the load factor, Bu Adel. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, if, if the load factor reaching uh, reaching its uh, capacity design, design capacity, which is uh, approximately 200 and 250 person per cars, yeah, uh, you definitely will have a much less uh, emission per percent. But uh, if uh, if it's it's empty uh, or it's not uh, reaching uh, uh, minimum load factors, uh, commercial load factors, uh, of course the emission will increase uh, significantly compared to the cars. That is why uh, it's very important to put the railway networks in the high density and high activities corridors. That is why in the Sarbagita, before the implementing any technology uh, of uh, transit systems, uh, whether it's PRT, RT or MRT or anything, uh, ART, so many uh, vendors uh, promoting their products. Uh, the, the most important for the city is to uh, identify which uh, the most potential uh, uh, high uh, capacity and high density corridors uh, regarding to the uh, city's uh, historical uh, developments and also uh, uh, what the futures uh, features uh, ideals of uh, of the city. That's my uh, response. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Tori. Yeah, because if we talking about load factor, if we like the train or the carriages will be very full during peak hours, but during non peak hours, sometimes it can be a little bit empty. So, yeah, maybe that's where the problem with the energy is. But then, do you think overall it will be sustainable? It, it will be more sustainable to use train rather than the private vehicles? Maybe can I? 
Yes, yeah, yes, 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 yes. No, because I, 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 of course, I, I, I agree. No? It's everything depends on the load factor. No? Uh, but it's um, if you if if I check the the usage no, of the MRT system in, in Singapore, even outside the peak hours, is crowded. No? Because the entire policy no, uh, okay. is encouraging people are using public transport. No? So uh, the MRTs are uh, they are running. Even in uh, after ten, uh, every five minutes, no? and, yes. and I mean we are not we are not so packed like during peak hour, but we are full. No? No? And and also, I mean it's I'm a public transport person, no? but of course, uh, it's we are, we have situations where a private car might be better than public transport depends on the on the demand. No? And uh, if you're living in a, in a small village, uh, Singapore don't have, but I'm coming from Germany. Now we have also small villages with 300 persons are living there. You cannot offer a high quality public transport system there. It's, in this case, uh, you're bringing every 10 minutes a bus. No? Uh, it's a lot of energy, the bus will be empty. No? This is not sustainable. In this case, uh, demand is low. A private car might be better. Mm -hmm. But if you're living in a high density city, no? public transport is better. No? Depends, depends on the demand. So each each system has its uh, specific use case. Okay. Yeah. All right. Okay. Thank you. Thank you for the answer. Paidu, Paidu, mau nambah? Paidu. No, no, pak. No. Okay. Uh, I would like to, uh, so this is typical question, uh, sustain, more sustainable or not. Is it a, a typical question that uh, politicians usually ask? I want to have a sustainable city, so I want to develop, uh, or, or, or to, to construct uh, rail systems, subways, big projects, infrastructure projects, and all the banks happy, including World Bank. <laughs> I do. <laughs> yeah. Instead of understanding the demands, just exactly what Andrea said, yeah. Uh, so it's very difficult. Uh, even uh, the case of the uh, Bali, initially uh, the SUMP, uh, 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 the team that developed the USMP, forced to include to insert the all the uh, urban rail uh, proposals that came all the from the all vendors. And then uh, we 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 very uh, it's 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 a it's a long debate uh, with the local local uh, local uh, governments, and then finally we uh, we met with the governors, and then uh, we give uh, one oh one uh, public transport planning <laughs> with uh, with uh, with him uh, to to explain about. Uh, what is the consequence when uh, we offer shooting uh, the, uh, the public transport uh, technology uh, to address uh, uh, less uh, what uh, low uh, demand uh, for it? And then, uh, yeah, uh, and, and, uh, then uh, they understand uh, about it. And uh, in at least, at least in March, and they want to start with the DRT instead of the LRT. But who knows uh, with that? Okay, okay, thank you. And okay, uh, thank you very much for the answer. Maybe there is there any questions from the audience? Is there any questions? Okay, maybe we're waiting I, because I have another question. <laughs> so um, I'm just wondering, like, because um, you know, like the city is already established, like in Jakarta, how difficult or how easy it is to add a new route, like especially like for for example, like in Jakarta, we have a lot of empty links between the public transport. And if we want to add more, and we we want to like follow what what we have in Singapore or in Munich or in German or in Paris, then how difficult it is and how or how easy it is because the land is already occupied by buildings and other infrastructure. Hmm. 
Yeah, maybe. <clears throat> maybe, but Andreas, please. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, of course. I think there is no there is no easy answer for this. Uh, it's uh, it, it, once once if the land is occupied, of course, uh, we have to find solution to uh, to remove the usage and to give uh, yeah to to create space for public transport. I think it's unavoidable, but it's once it's occupied, um, very tricky, very tricky, uh, and that's why. Um, a long-term combined land use and transport plan is necessary. Otherwise, you have this, yeah, you have this problem. I, I remember, also this is a very common problem. And uh, during my time in, in Munich, uh, we were offering an entire lesson. We were, we, we were calling this land mobilization. Also how to, how to uh, gain land back né, which which is used for our purposes uh, to use it for for road infrastructure or for public transport infrastructure né? how to how to get it back that's not so easy that's not so easy and to avoid this problem né, long term land use and transport planning is necessary oh. but it's there's there's no other way you, we need to do it yeah, yeah. If, if we don't do uh, no network all right. Okay. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Andres, for the answer. And how about uh, Mr. Eduardi and Mr. Tori? Because Jakarta and other big cities in Indonesia, we pretty much establish our own land. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, yeah, but maybe um, uh, let, let's, let's uh, talk about Jakarta. Yeah. Um, the, the like say the the main uh, responsible is from the government yeah of Jakarta right so if the government itself uh, don't have any policy or any uh, responsibility how to build or implement the public transport in Jakarta. And this is not not this not will be uh, there is no um, chance to build them, especially in this dense area or or uh, uh, existing building, right? So, for example, um, Medan that have planned uh, to build LRT in Medan, mm -hmm. right? Uh, the mayor of Medan does not agree to uh, give their land. <laughs> Maybe Pak no, uh, know about what about 100 to 200 meters. So we, they cannot build the LRT in Medan. That's that that's the the willing of the uh, local government, the mayor itself. The head of local government to push the the people uh, to have the same uh, policy, the same uh, rules that they want the public transport, the good public transport. For example, uh, the other thing is like my um, presentation. The responsibility of uh, budget from local government to spend their money <laughs> is very small for transport facilities. Very very small. Yeah. So this is this is gonna uh, very difficult uh, to build the let's say public transport. Uh, dedicated land the the very uh, the most uh, the cheapest is a brt the cheapest uh, we compare with lrt and mrt the cheapest is brt so if the cheapest one you cannot get <laughs> how can we serve uh, the good public transport in in their cities that's the that's the question that we have to uh, 
answer. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Edwardi. And maybe Mr. Tori wants to add more insight into the questions. Uh, so, uh, I, uh, yeah, that's a few from Pa Edu based on the experience in Jakarta. I would like to uh, share uh, the experience from Surabaya. In 2015, Surabaya successfully uh, construct uh, 12 kilometers. Yeah, 12 kilometers, not only. Yeah, more, more than uh, 30 kilometers of uh, artillery roads, completely new. Why? Uh, the they are they are they are four they are four uh, new uh, roads yeah two fronted roads uh, uh, side by side uh, with the IME corridors uh, south on, south not uh, uh, sorry uh, not 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 uh, not south corridors the main north south corridor in Surabaya it's uh, it's used it's uh, it's, uh, it's using uh, land acquisitions. Uh, so uh, that's a uh, uh, that's a uh, typical yeah in in the urban area, but the uh, the other two uh, the mayor uh, middle eastern road and then middle uh, western road was uh, was constructed based on the land that uh, deliberately uh. uh but deliberately as, uh, assigned by the uh, estate of real estate developers. So they they are uh, they are two big uh, real estate developer in Eastern Surabaya and Western Surabaya, and by the law of uh, Perda RT RW, uh, they are mandated to allocate the land. Pasos pasum uh, uh, for for the uh, for the uh, other roads. So uh, it shows that uh, Indonesia also have a best practice on how to do a good uh, urban planning and how to integrate urban planning and transportation infrastructure planning and how to consistently enforce the planned and uh, make it worse uh, for uh, for our cities by uh, by in this uh, by the development of this for a uh, new artillery road uh, the north it's uh, east it is uh, is the congestions in the north south uh, corridors of surabaya uh, significantly yeah yeah Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much for the answers, Mr. Tori. Okay. Um, I. Okay, sorry. Is there any questions? Okay. Uh, if there is no other questions, then maybe I can uh, conclude a little bit about what um, has been um, delivered today. So I think the main issue is we need the government to take a big step and actually have a, a thorough plan to ensure that the public transport is linked well so we can catch up. In terms of Indonesia, we have a lot of to catch up uh, with other countries to for our public transport system because in the future it will be a more sustainable a more sustainable options because um, with the amount of uh, fuel and oil and gas and even coal limited, then we need to find a more sustainable solution. And yeah, well, I think other countries have already gone far in terms of uh, establishing their public transport, but Indonesia still need to catch up on that. But then um, as, um, as as said by our speakers too, like we need the commitment from the government because the funding itself and the planning itself it requires a bigger plan okay and i think that's our uh, seminar for today
Thank you very much for Dr. Andreas, Mr. Eduardi, and Mr. Tori for sharing the precious knowledge to us. And we definitely learned a lot about public transport. And maybe before we end the session, we would like to take some pictures together. Um, Farel will take the pictures. Will you, Farel? Uh, yes, for sure. Okay. Um, uh, maybe before uh, we take the pictures, I would like to thank uh, Dr. Adelia for taking over and to all the speakers for such inspiring insights. It has been a pleasure to have uh, uh, you guys speak and moderate here. I hope everyone find this morning's presentation uh, useful and informative. But uh, before we end this meeting, I would request the committees, uh, Dr. Adelia and all speakers, as well as everyone present here to turn on their cameras for a short documentation session. <clears throat> okay, can uh, everyone turn on their camera? Okay, I'll start taking the pictures now. Yeah, okay, I think we are done. Thank you, everyone. <clears throat> okay, um, okay, so the documentation is done. Okay, then I would like to close the seminar by thanking everyone to have, who have already attended. And again, thank you very much for our speakers today, Mr. Tori, Mr. Edward, and Dr. Andreas, for your precious time and knowledge to be shared with us. And hopefully we will see you again in our other seminars. Thank you and good afternoon. Thank you. Thank you, everyone. Stay Thank safe you. and have an amazing rest good. of the day. Yeah, good luck everyone. Pamit, Pak Edu, Bu Adel. Ya, Pak. Thank you, Pak. Terima kasih. Thank you, everyone.